In October 2014, I took my final trip in South America. My trip included a fantastic tour of the main attractions of the southernmost Patagonian channels on the ship Australis. We visited Tierra del Fuego, glided through the Straits of Magellan, we followed the Beagle Channel, originally discovered during Darwin's exploration of this area, and as documented in his book, The Beagle. And finally, we went around Cape Horn, where the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans collide. In 1500, Ferdinand Magellan sailed around Cape Horn, and while he was there, he met with the indigenous people named the Toluches, who were very tall and well-built, and he named them Patagones from a character in a popular book of the time. And thus the land became known as Patagonia. Patagonia is an area not in one country, but it covers both southern Chile and southern Argentina. So come along with me and enjoy some of the fantastic sights and experiences that I had. First here, but first here's a view of our lodgings and food because that's a very important part of any trip. Australis for three days and four nights. Each night we would be enlightened by one of our guides about the area we were to visit. They were trained to read the latest scientific information and they were always very informative and excited about what they were going to share with us. Then the next day we would anchor offshore and board our zodiacs and speed to shore. Take a look at this handsome guide at the front of the boat. I think that he was part of a Tulchi Indian. Um, there were some delightful sights everywhere, even on the boat. The Australis tours adhere to strict rules to protect the environment, so we stayed on paths and did not touch any part of the environment. provided a glimpse of the types of plants that have survived this arid, windy climate that has little rain. The soil here is very shallow and it lies on top of huge rocks which came from early volcanoes and melting glaciers. There are three levels of plants. The most abundant are found in the flat areas and consist of semi-desert vegetation including rushes and grasses. Moss grows on the rocks, attracting other smaller plants, which eventually create soil that can hold plants with short roots. Uh, one of the plants that we see um, a lot there is Quillimbe, which is a yellow spiky plant and is reported to make a tea that helps reduce the effects of a cold. On the second day, uh, we, oh, on the second step, there are more woody shrubs, and finally, in the upper levels, are southern beech trees and evergreens. When a tree falls, it um, takes a very long time for it to be replaced because there's so little soil to nurture it. Thus, we carefully explored the area, being 
I'm very careful not to touch or remove plants, rocks, or even feathers or seashells. Our next arrival place to explore was Wallachia Bay. It is a historical site with the remains of a failed sheep ranch. The Chilean government evidently sent the indigenous tribes of fishermen inland and enticed a family, provided them with a herd of sheep, hoping to establish sheep ranching in the area. But the area was so desolate and lonely that they did not last long. A museum is established on the land. There were interesting artifacts as well as wonderful pictures of the indigenous Indians taken by a priest who roamed this area for years. He documented in pictures and writings the early history of the region, the people, the water, and the plants. Well, day one is over, and as we cruise south, we notice that the weather is becoming harsher with sleet and high winds, and that much of the vegetation is replaced by rocky land and glaciers. Day two saw us visiting Tucker's Island. We were so excited about this because we were visiting a colony of penguins, cormorants, and many other birds and animals. We had hoped to go ashore to see the penguins, but it was too windy and the water was too rough. But we still got very close to the island and in one place we were actually able to beach, but we couldn't get out of the boat. And we had a great view of these adorable particular creatures, the penguins. We were able to see the males busily finishing digging their home, which were basically holes in the ground, and standing proudly next to them, hoping to attract a female to come and join them. And while uh, the female lays an egg and sits on the nest, the father is busy catching and bringing food to mom and keeping her happy. Once the babies are born, he sits and keeps them safe and warm, and mom runs quickly to bring enough food to keep her hungry crew fed. And at times, their appetites seem insatiable, and I'm sure she must get extremely exhausted, as all mothers do. There are also um, still some adolescent males who were born late in the season uh, here who have a black stripe down their side. And I've also added some other animals and birds that were sighted by previous visitors, but our group didn't get to see because we were so early in the season. Glacier is next on our list and it is stunning. I learned that while cows have calves, glaciers calve icebergs, which are chunks of ice that break off the glacier and fall into the water. Calving is when chunks of ice break off and we call these resulting chunks of ice icebergs. The thunder of falling ice is a warning signal. It often sounds like a gun going off and a lot of us flinched every time it happened. But in some huge glaciers, which ours was not, it is a signal that an approaching glacial wave could happen that could rise up to 20 feet and break over the beach, sweeping great um, boulders before it. So watch out if you're up in Alaska somewhere. By this time, my foot was starting to really bother me a lot, but for some reason, I was talked into climbing to the top of a mountain to get a better view of the glaciers. Little did I know that I would be holding onto a rope and pulling myself up a steep, rocky, narrow path. But the best part, after the view, came when I realized I would have to get down. I asked my guide the best way to get down. And he said matter-of-factly with his cute accent, Oh, you just hold on to the rope and jump down the mountain. You mean like repel, he said. I mean, he was cute, but that was a little more than I was counting on. But repel I did and made it safely down, and that was it, believe me, for my land explorations in South America. 
On the third day, we went through Glacier Ali, which is um, part of water that goes through hundreds of glaciers on both sides. And we were able to enjoy the views from comfortable chairs and panoramic windows inside. As we approached Cape Horn, there was an icy wind blowing and high waves, and we weren't sure if the waves were too high to go ashore, but finally we were uh, given the all clear to do so. Um, I decided I wasn't really going to do that, um, but many people did go ashore and climb the steps to the museum and uh, the gift shop at the top of this part of Cape Horn. I chose to watch, but here is a description of the trip. The wind drives against our waterproof clothing. We are at the last piece of land before Antarctica. In front of us, the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans crash into each other. There is a lighthouse, which a family of three mans for a year. In this case, it's a mom, dad, and a child. And there is also a large Chilean flag and a giant diamond-shaped monument dedicated to the men who have died sailing around Cape Horn. So once everybody was aboard, we said goodbye and went around Cape Horn. And <clears throat> that night we had our final dinner with our new friends. And as the um, morning came, we watched the lights of Ushuaia in Argentina as we arrived at the end of our journey. So thank you for coming along this wonderful trip with me and I look forward to hearing from you, I hope. Ciao!